This is really important because it, it does link back actually to that community piece that if students feel like they have something invested in the course and they can make a difference, then they're more likely to be reflective. So it can be built into the whole process of the course to have students providing feedback about the assessments, about the way that the course is run, and the interactions that they're having with their classmates and with their faculty members. And all of that put together can really help to foster small changes in a classroom that can make a really big difference. The best reason for seeking feedback from your students about how the course, how they experienced the course, how it ran for them, um, what content was chosen, their ease of use of technology, the best reason for seeking feedback on all of those things is to improve the instruction for the next go-round. Um, you as the instructor are shaping an experience for your students and if you don't know how they're experiencing, you can't make it better and more impactful for them. So I would recommend not just um, a final course survey or something like that at the end of a course, which clearly you're going to want that, but things along the way throughout the course. You might have an early semester feedback survey that you ask them. You might have them do a reflection on their learning over the course of the semester where every week or every two weeks or every module they're putting an entry in that journal that says this is what my learning was, these are the things that helped me learn it, and these are the things that hindered me learning it. And so through their reflection on their own learning, which is benefiting them, you're also learning what worked and didn't work for them in the course so that you can make adjustments and continually improve as an instructor for your next group of students. Being open with our students and being honest with our students builds trust. It, it builds that relationship that we're looking for in all of our online classes. So if students know that it's your first time, they're probably a little more likely to be generous and provide feedback that's constructive but not harsh. So if it is your first time, let them know. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. It might be their first online class too, and it might really make them feel better that they're not alone in that first time experience. Feedback from students about a course, whether it's a brand new course or a course that has run many times, is equally important. Um, any instructor, whether they've done it once or they've done it many, many times, can learn more from their students and can learn more about things that are changing and coming up new and are impacting the students' lives. With the changes in technology, for example, that might impact how students are experiencing a course than they did three, four years ago. So the importance of it is the same. Um, as a brand new instructor with a brand new course, it might be wise to kind of share that with your students. This is the first time I'm teaching this course. I'm learning along with you. Um, I'm really interested in knowing how you're experiencing this course and we can adapt it along the way as we find something is better or worse or whatever. Um, I think making that horizontal relationship with students is a really important factor in the teaching learning relationship. There's a couple of other ways that you can get feedback from your students as the course is going along. You can have an ask a question forum where they're asking questions about course logistics, course content, um, things that they're confused by. So the types of questions that you get in your Ask a Question course can lead you to improve your course for the next time around or even for the next module. You know, if, if students are um, suggesting that something is unclear or doesn't make sense or if there are a lot of questions about a particular process, then you know that that particular thing needs more explanation or it needs an example or it needs a rubric or something like that to help make things clearer for the students. Um, so you can get feedback that way. You can get feedback also through assignments and discussions where you're seeing where students are hitting the mark, meeting your objectives and whether or not. And um, it's possible to add in or question or reach out to a particular student and say, you know, what happened for you here? It looks like you were confused or something wasn't clear and you can get that individual feedback to kind of try to help. Maybe most of the class kind of gets it, but some don't you want to do better for those few. If we look at Carol Dweck and the growth mindset, it's all really about getting that feedback and getting something that's tangible that we can look at, address, make changes based on. So one of our favorite, very simple ways to do it is a start, stop, continue. And that's just list one to three things that you think I should start doing 
that they, students kind of feel like they need that they're not getting in the course, one to three things that they should stop doing. So something that isn't helping you or maybe that they see the faculty members putting in a lot of time doing something that really isn't benefiting them in their academic experience. And then something to continue. So this is one to three things that students are really hoping that you continue throughout the course. So it's that pat on the back and that the you're doing this right <laughs> piece there. And it just gives a lot of feedback and it's in a pretty informal but constructive way. There are pitfalls that can happen with this because I think a lot of times what happens, people say, oh, I'll do a survey. And it's a ranking, a Likert scale or something like this. But the questions you ask are critical. So if you say, was this a good course for you, that doesn't tell you anything. It doesn't help you know what was helpful to the student and what was not. Um, if you say, which content was most helpful to you, and you list you know, five of the content items from the course and have them rank them most helpful to least, that tells you more about whether or not those materials should be in the next round or not. Um, if you ask a qualitative question like, which activities were most beneficial to your learning, as opposed to, did you like the activities in the course? You know, the kinds of prompts that you write are critical, so I would suggest sitting down with a colleague, um, with an instructional designer, with someone else outside of your field to go over those questions and get feedback it might be a way to hone those questions down better. I mean, when we're asking for feedback, there's always potential for pitfalls. So we have to really take everything with a grain of salt, and that's why I love our instructional designers, because they're always people that we can go to, and sometimes a piece of feedback is a little harsh, but then when you dig into it, it really might not be what the student, it maybe it came across in a different way than the student intended, or there might be a small change in the course that can be made that seemed like it was going to be a lot bigger based on the feedback. So I always encourage consulting with your instructional designer or even a, a colleague, a fellow faculty member who may have taught online before, because feedback is something that can be hard sometimes when we get it, but if we really look at it with an open mind, then there's a lot of opportunity.